Welcome to the Red V TV preview show, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2022 season. As we look ahead at this week's round three Bet Red Super League clash against Wakefield Trinity at the Totally Wicked Stadium. Kevin, Christian Wolf has named another unchanged squad. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you for the instant fan reaction on Friday night. That'll do. See you later. See ya. Boring. <laughs> um, that said, yeah, it's uh, really good that we can go and name another unchanged squad. Uh, no red cards for dropping players on the heads and trying to take the kneecaps out. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good. It is good that we can do it. Obviously, the, the one question will be the Hoppelati or Sim um, kind of answer, like question and answer there. Um, obviously, the lads who are getting picked in the 21 uh, are doing that little bit more than the ones outside, aren't they? Um, I know some are getting game time over at Lee. Dan Norman's had a couple of runouts. Jake Wingfield was in there um, for last weekend's game. Um, yeah, it's... Why why did you change it? I suppose that's the question. Well, that is the question we are going to discuss, Kevin. Yeah, slick this. First of all, Joey Lussick is the man this week. Is that a sign that he starts this week at Hooker? Um, I suppose that the, the thing does, is... With does that Chris depend, Lee? Kevin, on whether Jamie Allen... Saints media manager picks the team or Christian Wolf. <laughs> yeah, is, is, is Jamie Allen the brains behind our title success? Well, listen, it's all um, it's all kind of come together since he's been on board, hasn't it? So, But you could well say, be. are the graphics that we produce for games the work of Christian Wolf? <laughs> Possibly. Who knows? Um, I, I don't know. I think you, you look back at Christian Wolf over the past uh, couple of years, and he he hasn't really chopped and changed, has he? He hasn't really just rested players for resting them's sake. I think it's almost a different scenario this time because Joey Lussick is undoubted, undoubtedly um, Super League class, um, and I, I'm not having necessarily a go at. The hookers that we we've had in the past, um, but there's probably a lot more trust in Joey Lussick being able to play 80 minutes and affect those 80 minutes um, than there has in the past. And that's just that's just how sport works. It's it's not necessarily turning around and saying that some players aren't good enough for Super League. It's just how sport works that that you do have better players. Um, and ones that, that do get more trust from the coach. Well, listen, James Roby has spoke of um, when he was talking pre-season about this potentially being his last year and looking to hand the baton uh, to Joey moving forward. So with that said, you get the impression that this game this week is just one of those where you, you can start Joey and, and, and obviously preserve... Mr. Roby's legs a little bit, just have him coming off the bench and, and spelling him. Yeah. Well, that, that's it, yeah. We're not necessarily saying that James doesn't get a shirt in the 17 at all, but it might just be that he does the 10 minutes each side of half-time and, and Joey gets a little bit more more of a run-out and a bit more, a couple more minutes in the, the legs and the lungs. Um, and kind of, as you said, as, James has said, and as you've rightly alluded to there, it's that kind of changing of the guard, that passing of the baton, whatever phrase you want to use for it, it's just another step towards that. Is this a potentially a fixture this week then as well that we can maybe read a little bit into what uh, Christian's um, attitude is going to be to team selection this year? Obviously, we know, obviously, over the last couple of years, he has liked to basically go strong all the way through with, it, with his best team. Um, I think for me, I noticed this comment this week was, we'll pick the best team for this week. Not necessarily the best team, his best 17 that he sees. So is that a sign that he may look to 
to rotate a little bit. He obviously realises he's got such a, a strong squad this year. Is this a week where you see potentially Jake Wingfield come in and get a shirt and, and get some some minutes into his legs? Because obviously, from what we've seen so far this season in all Super League games, there's going to be suspensions, there's going to be injuries. Um, what you don't want is the likes of Jake Wingfield, obviously, his next man up to be coming into a massive game cold should we suffer that fate? I think we had this conversation last year uh, where we were talking about Dan Norman being probably the one that we spoke about most with it, where we were saying that he needs to come in and get get minutes. And, and obviously, for, for whatever reason, it wasn't Dan Norman's year last year to come into the team. Jake's had time over at Lee. Um, so he has had a, a competitive hit out and a good hit out. Um, but there's probably, well, it is a step up, obviously, uh, to come into a, a Super League team compared to a championship team, no matter how uh, competitive the championship is. Is Jake um, a little bit ahead of the likes of Dan Norman, or given that he's already yeah. had five or six appearances in the first team last season? Yeah, I'm not, I mean, uh, you're, comparing apple, you're comparing apples with oranges there. I, I'm making the point that we've had this conversation previously and Dan Norman was the one that we were we were talking about. Um, Jake Winfield probably is ahead of him. Um, as you say, he's, he's played a bit more um, and he's 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 been in and around the squad a little bit more as well. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity to, to potentially get more minutes into people. Curtis Sirenan's kind of coming in quite nicely and uh, and getting his pre-season actually in the season. Um, so getting Jake Winfield a bit of game time, because um, obviously we've got Hull KR away and then Warrington coming up after that. Um, as you say, with injuries always on the horizon, with suspensions always on the horizon, um, it'd be good to have players who are a little bit more in tune with kind of uh, with with that kind of match fitness and match sharpness. I'd say rather rather than having to drag two or three in who aren't quite at that level. Yeah, um, Christian said that Will Hopwarty is back in contention this week after training. Obviously, he missed um, last week with a rib injury again. The performance of Josh Sim last week. Um, didn't look out of place, scored two tries, took his, his opportunities well, has done his selection hopes, um, no harm whatsoever. So you get the impression that, again, if, if Hopwati isn't 100%, you just hold him back for another week and, and just go again with what you, you have on that right-hand side. Yeah, absolutely no point risking making that injury any worse in round three. Absolutely none at all. There's plenty of rugby to play this season. There's no point throwing him back in where he, he might be 50-50 or even 60-40, where you think, you know what, as you say, Josh Sim had a good game over at Hull and it was tricky conditions. Um, so for him to come in and, and kind of look assured on that wing, um, you just don't see any point in risking someone if they're not kind of up at... And then we listen. They don't all play at hundred percent fitness. They're all either got some kind of um, support or strapping or or whatever uh, on. But there's no point risking him. Is there's no point risking Hopalati if he's uh, if he's not fit, especially in a game this week with and with all due respect to to Wakefield, even head coach Willie Poachin's mum wouldn't be backing them to come to totally wicked and get a result. And there you go. Well done for Wakefield on the victory on Friday evening. Um, as Dave's just put the mockers on it. Click no, that. listen, listen oh, they've, they've run teams close, though. They have run teams close. Um, so, yeah, you'd think that the form that we've started this year in that we should be beating... Wakefield and really that, that should go for any team who come to the Totally Wicked, you should be obviously your home games should be your, your bread and butter your two points, this is what we're, we're looking at here um, but yeah they, they have run teams close though they have run teams close so far this year Do you know what, listen 
people might say let's let's put the mockers on a little bit. Um, we take part in 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 one of the the media competitions that a lot of the the journos take part in. I can guarantee I think there's about eighty in that comp. I don't think one person will go with Wakefield this week. So people can say what well, like I'm only saying what everybody's thinking. Um, listen, things happen. Players get sent off, go down to twelve. But yeah. if you played this game ninety nine times out of a hundred, Saints win it. But you do get that one in a hundred where Wakefield come and think it was in twenty seventeen, beat us sixteen twelve. They happen now and again. But yeah, you get the impression that our team selection this week will be hopefully with that little bit of rotation in mind. I think Christian Wolf said himself um, that that Wakefield are going to come with nothing to lose. Yeah, and that's it. They, they will. They can. They can turn up, um, not expecting to to get beat because they won't. That's not how professionals do it. Um, but they're, they're probably thinking, well, this is a tough game that we can try something new. Like if it's drier than it was on Saturday, um, where Hull tried kind of keeping us guessing, keeping us on our toes, they might they might try doing something like that. They are missing a couple when you put their squad up. If you're going to put their squad up, they are missing a couple. Which it will be a bit trickier for them, um, but yeah, they, that's it. They've, they've got a free throw, is it? Haven't they? They have. Um, who are your thoughts to miss out, Kev? I'll give you mine first. I am going to say missing out Ben Davis, Kyla Moore, Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook, and. Do, do, do. I'm going to go. I think Will Hopoati misses out again. Yeah, I'd say Hopoati. Um, just because I'm going to base it on what um, Christian Wolf's done in the past couple of years, I think your team will be exactly the team that took to the field against Hull. Exactly that 17 that took to the park against Hull. So for you. Wing, Wingfield, Davis, Hopawati, and Amo miss out? Yeah. Okay. All will be revealed on Friday yeah. evening. As I say, um, as I say, as I say, though, mate, I based that on, on the fact that Christian Wolf over the past couple of years hasn't done anything different. He may change it up this year, but as of yet, yeah. Nothing. Yeah, so for me, Louis Amo, Davis, Hopawati miss out, and I think Roby starts on the bench as well. Okay. Yeah. Wakefield squad. So as as you've said, Kev, um, they've been unlucky in the in their opening couple of games, but they have got a couple of youngsters coming through that they're pretty sweet on, haven't they? Yes, they have. Um, yeah, very good. Um, is one of them youngsters uh, playing twenty four? Is he? Is he a potential new star in the mix? I hope you're getting some kind of kickback for this. No, but do you know what? Listen, Super League needs needs crowd favourites, don't they, Kev? Yeah. Players that kids and adults... Grown up stuff. <laughs> oh. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, fair enough. Listen, he could be... I just want a happy last, world. Uh, last year... Um, Wakefield fans were clamouring to, to see Harry Bowles get uh, game time. He's got a name mm. like a sweet. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they were clamouring for him to get game time and, and with Liam Hood missing out uh, this week, he's got a chance, hasn't he? I think, who, who did they play? Was it Liam Kay, the winger? that they played at nine against us before the Challenge Cup. And it was like, we didn't, he didn't, I don't think he knew what he was going to do, so we certainly didn't. And to be fair, yeah. he, he's done he's done really well in, in Wakefield's academy, hasn't he? Um, and that's not sugarcoating his performances. God's Can you stop these now, please? I think the tank plastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carry on. I'm dumb. 
I'm done. No, the, um, going back to like they're missing Liam Hunt this week. That's a that's a big miss for him. Um, they're also missing the first two choice centres, um, Reese Reese Lynn and uh, Bill Tupu. Um, Mason Lino, he's not getting much game time this year. Um, he was in the 21 man squad last week, didn't play, and has, has dropped out completely. But they've got Jacob Miller back. Jacob Miller's almost one of them underrated players, I think, that just he leads them round. And I know he was linked with, I think he was linked with Wigan in the off season. Um, he kind of leads them around a the park. It, it'd be good to see what he would have done for it for. Um, like a better team, with all due respect to Wakefield, but someone who was challenging for top four. Um, but fair play to him. I think they've, they've, David Feet has come back in. That's a bit of a mad squad number. I don't know the story behind why he's number 35 this year. And, um, yeah, it's that's it. Listen, they, they've got good players, proper box office players. But as you say, we, we should... We should be Wakefield on Friday night. Yeah, we, we, we should. Um, Wakefield will be hoping that they can come on, put a little bit of a, a performance on, get some love from the crowd and leave without any egg on the faces. Yes. Very good. Can I get any more? <laughs> I hope not. How long have we got? Are you now Googling him? No. Because <laughs> um, we're both also right. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna break kind of what we usually do here because I know you're on your phone Googling them. I also know what you're trying to watch in the background because I keep seeing you looking up at your TV, and that's what I'm trying to watch through the Twitter feed here. Um and people will say, get back to your first sports being obviously me being from Burnley with this thick Haydock accent. Uh, and you're not happy with the football at the minute, are you? No, because I've just seen them go 1-0 up. Yeah. <laughs> so never mind. Um, obviously, a couple of little um, side features of the game on Friday night. Um, it is the Bachelor Derby. Yep. And the other one is Will Tom Lynham. See 80 minutes without getting a card. Well, yeah, true. Um, I think it, um, they've taken to Tom Lynham up at Wakefield. I think they, they, they quite like him up there. And is he an improvement on, on what they had? Possibly. I think Liam Kay is the, the unlucky one who lost his number. Um, and, and it's, that's it, as you say, it's, he could, Tom Lynham could have been a great winger because he's got the speed for it. Well, it's, I suppose it's temperament that, that kind of singles you out from being a great player to just being a good player. Yeah. Um, and it'd be interesting to see the Bachelor Derby because I know James got a load of stick from Saints fans um, at Bellevue last year uh, when he got subbed off. He got told he wasn't wasn't quite as good as his brother, I think is the politest way I can say it. And to be fair to him, after watching his brother's performances this season, he'd probably agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that, yeah. that's it. He's on, hasn't he? I think we we better leave it there. Um, yeah. Otherwise, well, could we open those legs in the in the Wakefield side? Don't turn to jelly. Friday. I've done well. Let's get all them in. He must have got some stick at school being called Harry Bowes. Especially when the factory's in Cass. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And you know you're getting you're getting close when you see the, the new factory there. Yeah. Do you know what? They should well have a factory shop there when we go to Cass. We <laughs> come on with a boot full. I could not deal with you having so many E numbers. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a bag of star mix on Friday now. Good. Right. I might, uh, I think... I might change me I check might change my ticket then and upgrade to a seat. I'm not eating them. I'm just going to just stand there chucking them at the back of your head. <laughs> um, predictions for Friday then, Kev? Um, Saints by 20. I'm going to go Saints by 44. 
Wow. They, listen, they, they hang on, to be fair, hang on, to be fair, I said Saints by 24 at Hull, and it was 32. So, so you're wrong. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting closer. Yeah. Um, why is Saints by 44 that outlandish when we're not conceding points? Yeah, it's probably not. To be fair, it's probably not, especially if it's a dry track. Um, I just think well, that's that, not going to happen, is it? <laughs> I think it'll stop, be, if Kevin if it stopped raining now, it'd still be a swamp. Well, yeah, true. Um, and yeah, I just think that Wakefield are going to give it a good dig as well because they're, they're going to have, they're going to be coming into it quite kind of buoyant, even though they've not won. They've going over to Catalan and, and only getting beat by two, and they've been beaten by Hull by four. Um, listen, they're, they're not necessarily terrible, um, terrible, terrible results. They've not been whacked by forty-four, have they? Not yet. Not played us yet. Right. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll catch you for the instant fan reaction on Friday evening. Catch you soon.